Yeah, guys, check this out. You will never see me at a Lana Del Rey concert. So I can't use that music. How about you? This was the strangest concert I've ever been to. There was a guy screaming constantly for Lana to kill him. <laughs> and he kept requesting heart-shaped box. Go on the road and play a box the whole vibe was incredibly weird, spooky. But as the night went on, especially the last like three songs, her demeanor changed. Lana Del Rey's demeanor changed. And for some reason, my camera kept glitching. Yeah, guys, look, look at these here. T what the hell is that? You see that? What am I looking at here? I just, I saw, I saw this clip about uh, four or five days ago. What is that? That is not normal. Now, I will tell you that uh, spirits in the paranormal, it's like trying to put oil and water together. This is the kind of stuff that happens. Um, my daughter has my phone right now, but if you were to have a demon in front of you or a ghost, although they're much more rare, um, whatever the case may be, you try to record it and then it's going to mess the screen up and do crap like that. That is a manifestation that not, might not even be Alana there. I think it's just one of the dancers, but on all the photos I was taking, I don't know why this was happening. <laughs> Yeah, Phantom is just sitting back there. At the end of the night, she said she had two more songs left. She played one of the songs, took a cowboy hat from the audience, and then walked off stage. She walks off stage, the lights come on, the house lights, and then the screen behind the stage says, the end. And it was over. That was it. Some people posted a few days ago that they went outside and waited for her to come out. And eventually around 1 a.m. she came out and she said her voice was going out. And that's why she didn't play the last song. And that's why there wasn't an encore. But she literally just walked off the stage. It was wild. It was, I loved it. I bet Lana Del Rey would be a good ghost hunter. Do y'all think Lana Del Rey would go ghost hunting? I bet she'd be great at ghost hunting. Cause there was energy there. There was a there was a weird, spooky energy at the Now he's um he's your traditional ghost hunter, so take his advice with a grain of salt. You definitely don't want to uh I, I I don't even condone ghost hunting well, anymore. Mine comes with a lot of ruin your night before we start this. I don't know if I can even look at some of this. <clears throat> so you know, uh, I don't know if you guys know this movie, but he puts the glasses on and then he's able to see like that alien demon right there. Takes the glasses off, goes back to normal. I definitely think that uh, they live is. I'd call it closer to a documentary. But look, more manifestations. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with American Horror Story, but in uh, season four, Jessica Lange sings um, Gods and Monsters. The song was written and performed by uh, Lana Del Rey. I said, check out. Check out uh, verse one. It said, in the land of gods and monsters, I was an angel living in the Garden of Evil. Screwed up, scared, doing anything that I needed, shining like a fiery beacon. One could argue she's the perspective of Satan, the snake, maybe Lilith. Could, that could be interpreted one way or the other. You got the medicine I need, fame, liquor, love, give it to me slowly, put your hands on my waist, do it softly. Me and God, we don't get along, so now I sing. That right there, it's just weird. It's weird. No one's going to take my soul away. I'm living like Jim Morrison. You say a lot about that. 
headed towards an effed up holiday. Motel spree, sprees, and I'm singing. Verse 2, in the land of gods and monsters, I was an angel looking to get effed hard. Like a groupie incognito posing as a real singer, life imitates art. This, that's a little creepy. She has this uh, witch song. Yeah, Season of the Witch. When I look out my window, many sights to see. And when I look in my window, so many different people to be. You gotta pick up every stitch. Oh no, it must be Season of the Witch. Like, this, this is something that she does. It's not... Let me give you guys an example. You got like Doja Cat, right? She is pimping herself out to the music industry. Evil ties to the music industry. They are pulling her in and having her do all kinds of weird stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen my blind react to Doja Cat's Demons. It's a good one. I highly recommend taking a look at it if you haven't already. But this is something where Lana could have very well been a witch before even stepping foot in the music industry. I mean, she could be a plant. We don't know. Oh, yeah. David, I totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. But she'll get there. And a lot of it's for fame, money, uh, notoriety. Look at this. This is E.T. by uh, Katy Perry. This came out, what, 13, 14 years ago? The way everything about this song is about literal alien abduction. If you actually study alien abductions, study ufology, and what happens with the people when they are being um, pulled in and messed with um, against their will... A lot of the people, they develop a Stockholm Syndrome. They feel like they actually have a relationship with these entities. So hypnotizing. Could you be the devil? Could you be an angel? Touch magnetizing. Feels like I'm floating. Leaves my body glowing. They say, be afraid. You're not like the others. Futuristic lovers. Different DNA. They don't understand you. You're from a whole other world. A different dimension. Right here. Different dimension. Uh, David Grush. He describes these ETs as um, interdimensional beings rather than beings from another planet. This is coming to light now, and you have people from 15 plus years ago who have been um, told to write about this stuff. Some of them have actually had one-on-one -on -one experiences. I don't know if Katie's actually had this experience. She sure as hell is writing like she has. Open my eyes. I'm ready to go. Lead me into the light. These entities, they have a light about them. They don't usually have a darkness about them. That's why they're more on par with um, angels. Um, and it's like Lana Del Rey's gods and monsters. The gods would be the angels. The monsters would be the demons. But it just keeps on going. Infect me with your love and fill me with your poison. I shouldn't have to explain that. Genesis 6. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Cat from, cat from the public eyes. It does not stop. It keeps going. Then we go into go look at look at Heart Attack by Demi Lovato. Daniel, I've been good, man. I've been good. Look at this, Demi Lovato, putting my defenses up because I don't want to fall in love. If I ever did that, I think I'd have a heart attack. What does Demi Lovato go and go? What does she go through? She ends up having a heart attack, doesn't she? She ends up going to cardiac arrest from a drug overdose. I believe she relapsed in uh, 2018. That should have killed her. I think her heart did actually stop. And that's just one of those weird, because there's no such thing as coincidence, whether in this world or the Hollywood world um, or the music industry. It doesn't matter what plane of existence you are on in, in the physical, in the physical realm. doesn't matter. There's no such thing as coincidence down to the homeless in the streets, all the way up through people writing about their own uh, fortune or writing about their own death, which I will now share with you as well. We go to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't know if you guys know this. Too late, my time has come. Since shivers down my spine, body's aching all the time. Goodbye, everybody. I've got to go. Got to leave you all behind and face the truth. The dude died of AIDS. Almost 20 years later, he, got, he, he died of AIDS. The song was written in 1975. This is the stuff I'm talking about. These people are writing about their own fate. The music industry it is very spiritual. Really, music itself is spiritual. God wants people to sing and dance for him. What do other little G gods want? 
people to sing and dance for them. It's a wheel within a wheel. Like it just keeps on going. It keeps on happening. And this, now, you know, I call it all demonic um, because it's all against God, but it's more nuanced than just demons at play. Um, there are uh, these little G gods. We'll try to stick to demons here. We'll try not to go too far into aliens. Try not to go too far into um, the other gods, the foreign gods. Oh, God doesn't want us to sing and dance? That's not true. God wants us to sing and dance. I could pull up dancing in the Bible right now. Like, well, if I could spell right. Let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing praises to him with the tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the, beautify? the humble with salvation. Let the godly ones exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Yes, what we hear and say matters. It does matter. There's songs that I'll sit there and listen to that are... I'll catch a lyric that I'm like, ah, I forgot that they said this, and then I'm clicking it off because I'm not feeling it. Um, and that's, that's the whole process of renewing your mind, as the scriptures say. One of, I believe it's the book of Romans. And there is a renewing of our minds. I want to actually make a video on that. Um, the renewing of the mind versus the world. Because the world acts as NPCs. NPCs, the Matrix, becoming unplugged. That is the process of being born again. Uh, the way that Neo, um, when he does get unplugged. Uh, David, yes, 100%. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, no, they are not doing it in God's honor. You'll have T.D. Jakes out there um, getting with um, Kirk Franklin and all them, and they'll act like they're doing it in God's honor. If you guys get nothing else from this live, remember this. There is more than one God. The devil is a God. He gets, a, you know, he gets the little G title. He's not God the creator, but um, God is in governor, ruler, prince, principality. Um, Psalm 82 digs into that. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four, the devil is referred to as the God of this age or this world. Um, and he is the prince of the power of the air. What's in the air airwaves, right? Um, there's, it's just so easy to exalt your, I used to be in a rock band. It's easy to be up on a stage and these people yelling your lyrics back to you. It does feel spiritual. It feels invigorating. You want more of it. Um, there was a time where I was, I, I could have began self-destructing because that is what I wanted more than anything was uh, I wanted more of it. And um, I realized that I wasn't in it for the right reasons. So I backed out of music. 